Hey everyone, Nick from Accounting Add-ons here. And in this video, we'll cover how to pull data from OData-Link using SSIS and into SQL Server. Now this approach works whether you're using MOAB and zero data, it's exactly the same process. So let's get into it. Now before we go too far, there's a few settings we'll need to make sure we configure in OData-Link in order to work with SSIS. They don't normally apply to Power BI or Excel, but with SQL Server integration services, you need to make sure you use the right authentication method. So if we go to our zero model, what we want to look out for is the login type. At the moment, it says anonymous, which is not supported by SSIS. So what we'll do is we'll edit our model, we'll change it to basic authentication, and we'll click save. And we'll also need to make sure we assign our users now that we're using basic authentication. So we'll manage users, tick our user that we want to assign, click save. And that's the first step, basically. Everything else with regards to OdataLink is going to be configured exactly the same as all the other introductory video, but that is the one change you need to make sure in order to work through SSIS. Now, the next step we'll need to do is create a basic project in Visual Studio 2019. So if we go to Visual Studio 2019, we'll create a new project. We'll type in in the template SSIS. And we'll choose Integration Services Project and click Next. We'll give it a name, Demo Odata Link, and click Create. Now this will create the Visual Studio project and it's going to be a big blank template. Next, we'll need to define the connections to both our SQL Server database and OData link. We'll start with SQL Server. We'll go to the Connection Manager at the bottom, right-click New OLADB Connection, click New. We'll choose our server. I'll choose Creator 3 SQL Server 2019. We'll leave it as Windows Authentication because that's what I'm using. And the name of my database is called Test. I'll click the test connection to confirm that it's working. I'll click OK and I'll click OK. So that's adding the connection to SQL Server. Next, we'll do the same thing for OData Link. So we'll go back to the OData Link website and scroll to the very bottom where we get our endpoint URL and we'll choose copy. We'll then go back to Visual Studio. We'll right click new connection. We'll choose OData and click Add. We'll give it a name, I'll call it OData Link, and we'll paste that URL, which is our service document. The authentication type then that we need to select needs to match what we've set up in OData Link, and that's that basic authentication that we've configured. And we'll need to put our username, which is our email address and our password, which I use a password manager and I'll click test connection and it should work. Now, if it fails, double check that the IP address has been authorized because that's usually a block and also double check the URL has been entered correctly. And lastly, that you've entered the right username and password that the user has also been added to that model because all these situations or all these blocks will prevent you from connecting. Now, once you've connected, you can click OK. What we'll do next is add our data flow task. And we can grab the data flow task and drop it into the control flow panel. And the data flow task allows you to move the data from OData link into SQL Server. And that's what we'll work on first. The next step we'll do is we'll add our OData link data source. Now we'd want to do that step for every endpoint that we download. So I'll just drag the OData source in and we'll choose OData link as the connection. And for the purpose of this exercise, we'll use the accounts collection as the endpoint we want to pull. I'll click preview to make sure we can actually read that endpoint. The data is appearing, so that's a good sign. I'll click close and I'll click OK. Now, so that I know what I'm up to, I'll just right click and rename this step and call it OData link underscore accounts so that if we end up adding a whole bunch of different OData feeds, um, we know which one's which. So that essentially allows us to pull the source data. What we'll do next is we'll add our SQL Server destination. Because we've used an OLEDB data source, we'll want to use the OLEDB destination, but you could have technically used any technology you wanted. You can then drag the OLEDB destination onto the data flow page 
and then drag the blue line to connect it from your old data source. I can rename the OLEDB destination. I'll call it SQL underscore accounts. And if I double click on that, I've got to make sure I use the right connection. I'll click OK. I'll choose the name of the table, but because it doesn't already exist in SQL Server, so if I go to my SQL Server, I've got no tables in my test database. What I'll do is I'll click New. It'll create a SQL Server statement. I'll rename the table not to SQL accounts, but to zero accounts. And I'll click OK. I'll make sure that the mapping is done correctly and I'll click OK. Now if I go back to SQL Server and refresh, I should be able to see my table there, zero counts. And that's basically it in terms of a data flow. Now there's extra steps you can take, but in terms of the bare minimum, these two tasks would need to be done for every endpoint you want to pull. Now each time that you run this package, it'll pull the chart of accounts from zero and put it into SQL. And the problem you'll get with that workflow is it won't remove the old data. And that's because the old data feed that we provide is not a delta link of all the changes. It's the full table of accounts or invoices or whatever you want every single time. So because of that, we'll do one last step. We'll go to the control flow and we'll add an execute SQL task at the very start, which will chain to the data flow task. And in this task, we'll choose our connection. So it'll be our creator SQL Server test. And we'll run a delete statement. Um, I can do this all kinds of different ways, but I'll run a delete from um, zero underscore accounts, which should be the name of my table. And we want to do that to make sure that we flush all the data that's in the zero accounts table before we insert data. We can then click OK. And that's it for a basic control flow. Lastly, we'll test the package. So I'll just click Start to play it. This will build the project and then start running it. And on the Progress tab, you can actually see all the different steps running one at a time. Now, this might not work for everybody, and that depends on how your Visual Studio environment is set up. My setup is set up so that I'm always running it as administrator. You can actually see it says admin at the top right corner. And I found for my machine, I always needed to run Visual Studio 2019 as administrator if I was using SSIS to do the task. If I didn't do that, I'd get all kinds of errors. So just bear that in mind. You might need to run Visual Studio as administrator. The task is completely finished. If I go to SQL Server, I'll run a basic select statement just to see if all the data has been populated, but bar rights, it should be there. And that's basically it in a nutshell as to how to pull data from OData link, from zero, from MYLB into SQL Server. There's a lot of other tasks you can do in SSIS itself, but I won't go through all that. I'll leave that for another video. So I hope this showed you at least how to get started with SSIS and OData link and SQL Server, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.